when we first went in there, we kind of stylized it, kind of like uh, your thing where you were talking about suing the uh, governor of Alabama and stuff. And, uh, you know, I put wrongdoers on there and also the prosecutors. And the little white hair clerk's like, oh, you kind of, you're not the prosecutor. And, you know, you're not a prosecutor. I right? well, yeah, we're prosecuting the case. We're bringing it against these wrongdoers. He just had a tough time wrapping his head around, you know? Okay, when you, talk, when you talk to somebody at the window, you know you're talking to a clerk of the court. You're probably not talking to the court clerk, right? Well, yeah, uh, he's like an assistant, or he, he's like the, uh, the supervisor in the office or something. He's not the actual clerk right. of the court. Yeah, you right. Have, right. If, if you're having a problem, say, hey, can I just speak to the court clerk real quick? He's a clerk of the court, and the, the guy who's in charge of the of the. The, the, the management of the financial affairs and the paperwork to file as a court clerk, not the clerk of the court. Yep. Okay, so All right. just let me get this straight. Let me see, because this is what was funny. A couple things you said uh, was pretty funny, but they were trying to do to you, telling you you had six days, which I think is extremely funny. So anyway, um, they oh, they I had 20 days to um, get everybody served, but my dad died about 20 days, 420 days, and he didn't have everything all set up, so I did a suggestion of death and asked for additional 60 days to um, get them in to complain in and get them all, uh, you know, get all the wrongdoers uh, served their summons. Right, because if you, if you, when, if you, when you really start understanding um, what you are in common law, you will understand there is no rules, there is no latches, there is no statutes that bind or bound a man. You can do whatever you want. Oh, okay. There's no such thing as a statute of limitation when it's in common law. There's no such thing. See, they can't bind you or bound you to something called a latch. There's no such thing. But if you're an attorney or you're pro se or you're represented by an attorney and you're moving under certain rules like federal civil procedure or where are you from? What state? Texas? Uh, Massachusetts. Massachusetts? Wow, you don't have a crazy Boston accent like me. Okay. And I'm toning it down, believe me. <laughs> I'll slip every now and then. You'll you'll hear it. I'm from uh, Western Mass. It's uh, yeah, because I I travel all over the country. I used to go to Quebec a real lot. I'm, I'm actually in the horse business. I buy and sell horses and hay. Right. And um, and I go out west to buy horses and stuff. And people are like, well, you don't sound like you're from Boston. So well, no, I'm not from Boston. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm I'm originally from New York, but I have a real lazy New York accent. And when I get lazy, it sounds like Boston. So, but no. Anyway, I thought it was real funny what you were saying. First of all, like I said, I'm glad. I'm glad I, these guys, you guys, call up like this because it, it breaks things down. I think to help a lot of people, not just you. Most things aren't case specific. Most things are very general knowledge. There is no such thing as a statute of limitation. If you actually want to go back and say, "Where's Carl getting this nonsense from?" Just because he believes this nonsense doesn't make it true. It's like, okay, you want to see where it's actually written down? Okay. <laughs> it's the Judiciary Act of 1793, Clause 31. There you go. And like I said, I'm just walking around outside my farm right now. I mean, I'm not a computer. But if you guys actually want to study it, well, you just go knock your socks off. But the whole trick with common law is whatever the hell you say is true. You have to source it? Nope. You have to reference it? You better not. <laughs> Are you going to make it as a, uh, you know, a. Uh, Authority, by, you know, like a citation of authorities. Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna move oh. your stuff right out of. You're gonna move your stuff right out of common law, and you're gonna drift to whatever you cite. If you cite an authority in this maritime or merchant law or or admiralty law, or, you're gonna drag it. You're gonna lose common law jurisdiction. You're gonna lose common law in a heartbeat. All right. Well, um, you had said something about citing their statutes, and, and then one of your things got listed to it. You said something about. Right, CF, and then like, yeah, then they violated their own law, or they violated their own case law, or whatever. What, what does CF mean? I don't like writing CF because somebody says I actually want to know what it means. Well, like I said, what you might have missed that. What you do is, and like I said, thank God this this thing's being recorded and it's going to be taped for perpetuity now. All you have to do is Google quote unquote anything you don't understand what I'm writing. Just do quote unquote CF with a period and uh, Google it. And you know, they're going to be compared that with. Oh, okay. It's it's, cold, it's so freaking cold here in the West Virginia mountains right now. I compare that with um, the the core of Earth or hell. You know. Now, is there really a hell? 
I don't know. That's another dimension. Is it real? Is it not real? I don't know. See, but I'm not comparing it with Alaska because that's pretty much on the same plane or the same, you know, three-dimensional kind of thing. I'm doing with something so abstract and bizarre that they understand. They under actually understand what this code, compare that with code 1983, uh, compare that with Title 42, 1983. The civil rights violation by interfering with my rights to my property, blah, 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 compare that with Title that's Code 1983. And that's what I, I, I'm really looking to go towards is, uh, you know, uh, Title 42, 1983, but I didn't want, I, so I guess I would basically say I'm comparing to this or your, yeah. comparing to your, your Title 
go go back to to the court and have the, the judge for judgment on the defaulted um claim. Yeah, if it's a fictitious entity that you were making a claim against you, that's all you have to do. You just make, you just you just you just tell the court that uh, this is going to be recorded as a default judgment because they're never going to come back for the rest of eternity and ever uh, say that hey. You never verified your claim under the op- affirmation in open court. That's a void judgment. So until they grow some vocal courts, you could just if it's a, if you're going against a fictional entity or corporation like that, you could just settle for a summary, uh, a default judgment. That's fine. Against the man, you bet. Against the man, you better test. You better you better uh, have your judgment. You have your judgment read right off to the market in open court. But you're not suing a man, right? You're going after some corporation or something, right? Well, I was going to uh, I'm going after the town of Palmer, Land Court. Uh, I was going after the town manager, the tax assessor, the tax collector, the town council, um, in, in all, all of them in their official and individual capacity. Also, there's they use a court recorder up here. You don't even, not even a judge, and they just. They just they actually kicked me out of my house about a year and a half ago. But they just they just, they they issue a judgment at a land court and it doesn't even have a signature on it. It's got a spot for a signature and it says uh, recorder under the under the little signature line, but nobody even signs it. And I, I've looked at hundreds of these things in a registry of deeds, um, and uh, that's how they take people's properties. And then they use that unsigned judgment to go get. A, um, an eviction from a local district court. Yeah, it's because nobody ever objects. So since nobody objects, it's not true. It's presumed to be true until somebody objects. Well, I, I objected when they kicked me out of my house. Uh, yeah. it, like I said, you've got to be really careful because I think you just said that you tried to sue them in their official and individual capacity. Well, that's what I'm looking to do now. That's why I want to run this by them. So what is this? Is there something wrong with suing them in, the, in their in the, uh, official and their private capacity? Well, they did not do something wrong in their official capacity. They did not break their legal laws. They operated 100% within their capacity. You see what I'm saying? That's what that Title 42, 1983 nonsense comes around. If you have a county tax assessor, he says, well, look, you're a gay Jewish black lady in a wheelchair, so that basically covers everything under Title 42. Um, so we're going to issue a million dollars to your property, but your neighbor, since he's a pasty white guy, we're only going to charge him 50 bucks. That's a Title 42 complaint because he operated outside of his official capacity. He had no right to assess you unfairly or unreasonably compared to everybody else, but he just didn't like you because of your color or your race or your gender, your sexual orientation or your disability. You see what I'm saying? So he's not operating outside of his uh, duties as a tax assessor. That's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to assess taxes. But you can sue him for is that you're saying to him, are you claiming that everything that you're assessing me from, you're, you're trying to take property from me, my money, you're trying to take something out of that I claim has value, I'm not going to get into this money nonsense with nobody, because if you want to dump a ton of green money to me, well, my post office box is 440 left in Virginia, and you can dump all the green to me all day long. I totally accept that as value. So all you're basically saying to the guy is, well, you have value, and you try to take something of value from me, okay? I don't want you to take my value from me. So do you believe that a man has a right to take money from another man? So see, that's why you want to assume on an individual capacity because no man has a right to take money from another man. Now the tax assessor has a has the, a responsibility, obligation, and duty as the man holding that office to make tax assessments. And that's exactly what he did. Unless he just goes totally bizarre on you and says, well, because you're black, I'm going to charge you 10 times the amount I charge white people. Now you got a Title 42 complaint there. But no, you can't go up to them in their official capacity if they're operating within that capacity in which that office was written. If this is what their code says, if this is what they can and cannot do, that's what they're going to do. I mean, you can't go in... Huh? I'm going to say, like in the Massachusetts Constitution, for example, it says, um, I think it's Article 10, that, um, you know, each citizen shall contribute their and share the community, blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. But no part of the individual property shall be taken from him without, you know, due process of law, um, just compensation, 
opinion or a, a, a trial by judgment of peers. I mean, and that's not an element of my case. They're, you know, doing this property taking with due process law. 